Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to one more game from round 12 uh, Tata Steel Chess Tournament in Vegan Z 2020 and this was one of the most important games of this tournament because Fabiano Caruana as white um, American uh, Grandmaster number two in the world by ranking but during this tournament definitely number one and his ranking is 2822 uh, 28 years old american uh, italian grandmaster who play actually uh, on the first board of american team uh, and his opponent is a uh, young grandmaster from Poland, Jan Krzysztof Duda. His ranking is 2758, so he still have a couple of years uh, to get to his peak of his skills. And uh, he's predicted by many to become the super grandmaster to jump into the top five and maybe even more um, grandmasters in the world. So uh, very talented and uh, show his skills already in many tournaments in this tournament he drew all games and won one game so a uh, very solid player uh, but as i promise you uh, i would like to teach you how to pronounce Jan Krzysztof Duda because uh, I have the pleasure to know the Polish language as my native language so um, let's do that Jan and Duda is the first and last name so th this is obviously easy for everybody but saying Krzysztof it's not so easy I mean uh, it's of obviously it's Christopher uh, but in Polish we say Krzysztof and uh, and now the funny thing uh, these letters R and Z after K it's usually in Polish it's Z so it's not exactly sh, but it's z. And now the funny thing is that in this case, after k, we read it, we pronounce it as sh. So uh, it's, it's, it's not sh, but it's sh in this case. And there is another sh, s and z after, so we have double sh. So this probably is also easy for everybody like most people in most languages uh, can say sh. and now the funny thing is that after sh in polish language in this case we say e. there is y and this y is e. it's always e, not e not e not not any other sound it's very hard e. This is why it's Krzysztof. So I heard a lot of uh, commentators um, saying that nearly perfectly. Uh, Peter Sfiedler say almost perfectly. Agat Mator say it very well. Uh, but they have like little e over there, like Krzysztof, uh, which every Polish person would know. Okay, you are not na national. If, so if you want to say like native Polish, then you have to say Jan Krzysztof Duda. So now feel free to pause the video and try to pronounce Jan Krzysztof Duda Why I enjoy my cup of tea Okay, ready? For how long you had to um, pause the video to say it correctly uh, if, if you still cannot do it, uh, don't worry, you can do it, you know, every morning after wake up when you brush your teeth. No, may maybe when you brush your teeth is not the best idea, but, you know, soon after, um, before your breakfast, you can train uh, until you make it perfect. So say again, Jan Krzysztof Duda. Okay, without further ado and trolling more, uh, let's start the game. So we have d4 by Fabiano Caruana, knight f6, c4, e6, g3, that's Catalan opening, and now we have d5, bishop g2, bishop e7, and knight f3, preparing to castle, and black castle, white castle as well. D takes on c4, and here usually the most popular uh, move would be queen on c2 but caruana go for queen on a4 uh, and here jan duda jan krzysztof duda uh, answered c6 uh, usually a6 is the most popular but he without uh, any any thinking he just was prepared for for 
just simplify this line so he play c6. If he play a6, uh, for example, queen on c4 could be played, and after b5, uh, queen c2 and bishop b7, that would be pretty standard play uh, a lot of times during the, the many, many tournaments. And after c6, there is um, not huge difference. Of course, queen has to take now. If not, then um, b4, b5 is coming. So uh, queen on c4, b5 is coming anyway. And now uh, queen on b3. So not on c2, b3. And here we have bishop b7. So it's nearly the same, but the, there is a difference between these pawns. So um, as you see, now we have c6, not a6 pawn. Uh, and sometimes it's very important. Rook on d1, knight b on d7. Uh, and keep in mind that this structure of pawns is similar to the semi-slav uh, when uh, pawn on d takes on c4. And uh, usually the plan for, for black is a6 and then playing c5. So that's the regular plan. Uh, but here we have the bishop on g2. So with Catalan it's uh, more difficult to do that. And uh, here knight on e5 was played. So actually black tried to get this c5 move which is very important in that, po that position but white tried to make it as as hard as possible so for example in this case uh, black can't push c5 because uh, the bishop is hanging on b7 so something has to be done about that and also now we have double attack on this c6 so uh, knight takes on e5, we have d takes on e5, and now knight goes back to d7. Of course, knight can't go here because of the e4, so uh, black would lose the knight, so knight on d7. And here we have bishop f4, protecting this e5 pawn, and this e5 pawn uh, usually in many openings can be very annoying. Uh, it limits the king side development of the king side of the uh, of the black. Uh, so here as well, it's uh, pretty strong and giving even white some opportunities in some scenarios to to get there the very strong um, outpost for the knight. But here we have queen on c7, so defending the b7 bishop uh, and now trying to bring more support for this c5 move. Uh, and here we have one move in database, knight d2, and it, it was played in uh, 2018, not very long time ago. So for example, like I said, rook f on d8, that was the game, rook a on c1, so... Um, pretty much very good developing a6 so that's the standard plan for the uh, slav defense but also in this case queen e3 and here c5 can be played and after bishop on b7 queen b7 uh, black managed to win that game but you see this black structure is very strong uh, c4 can be pushed and uh, three pawns against two pawns on the queen side is is really great advantage so caruana deviate from that line and play knight on c3 and these games were played um, in the past uh, for example between two polish um, grandmaster but um, not not from the really really top uh, and also uh, we, which was drawn and also um, there are some games where white won so knight c3 not fresh idea but not really popular and here there are some options more or less attractive for for black uh, but actually let's start from something more obvious for example uh, knight on e5 can this pawn be taken because it's double attacked so for example bishop take on e5 queen take on e5 and now rook d7 attacking these two bishops so as you see 
Black won the pawn, so could be pawned up, but at the end of the day, after bishop on c8, uh, they are losing the bishop, but interesting things happening now. Queen d6, trapping the rook, and now bishop on c6, so uh, giving another giving another piece to uh, to black to, to take and and now attacking the rook so uh, black has to decide uh, that that would be not the option so queen has to take on c6 but now queen b5 so taking another pawn queen d6 attacking the rook but now rook can go to e8 and after bishop on d7 attacking both of the heavy pieces now we would have check and king f8 and queen just can choose where want to go and these are white which are uh, which has an extra pawn so uh, that would be it's not possible to take it actually so there are of course another options uh, what if g5 is played uh, now this bishop has to move for example on e3 and now knight takes on e5 is that possible yes it's possible but black actually uh, playing with the extra pawn but with this scary g5 pawn so black king wouldn't have so great protection here so not really great idea if the uh, queens are still on the board maybe it would be better if the queens are uh, traded and then maybe at that time and um, the last thing i would like to say what about a6 and then trying to go for this c5 knight e4 could be played uh, so um, bringing the another attacker here and for example actually black has to be really really careful if they play something um, like c5 uh, it's not the the worst thing but have to calculate uh, knight f6 this tactic is so awesome so for example uh, bishop takes on f6 and now pawn takes on uh, f6 but with discover attack on the queen so now e5 would have to be played f on g7 with attack on the rook so rook has to be moved and now of course can um, exchange the stuff and play bishop g5 or, or, or bishop e3 doesn't really matter so uh white would have probably also much easier game here so not really an options uh, all of these options not really great for black even even that would be the the main plan for black but not playable now so knight on c5 was played and here we have queen on c2 of course queen has to be moved and here b4 so duda pushed his um his pawn uh quite risky um it and it's not gonna be easy to keep the uh, all this pawn structure on the queen side now so a knight on e4 could be played uh, but after exchanging all the stuff bishop takes on e4 and h6 uh white would stand um quite okay actually this is like pretty okay for for both sides so uh caruana didn't want this actually so he played knight on b1 go back to b1 and now he want to develop uh, again this this knight uh, with some plans like before but black pawn is already much advanced so it can be maybe some target uh, and here we have bishop on a6 so bishop on a6 uh, literally attacking the e2 uh, pawn so uh, knight on d2 can't be played at this moment so bishop f3 first to defend this um, e2 pawn and now we have rook on c8 and this move is a very passive move and actually it's probably losing a lot of position for for black uh, strategically it's um, very difficult giving a lot of 
uh, difficulties for for black the best would be rook goes from f to d8 and after uh, knight on d2 this move is is really difficult to find it's just the engine which can find the move and for human it's nearly impossible because knight has to go on d7 first so uh, giving away the pawn so black would have to be the the pawn down and after queen takes on c6 queen takes on c6 bishop takes on c6 rook a on c8 and now if bishop go on f3 then g5 and uh, of course uh, winning this uh, pawn so um black would be totally fine here and uh, and even would have uh, quite good advantage now uh, black pieces play pl play really great here and uh, all the troubles are, are gone so uh, in this position probably bishop would have to uh, rook a c8 and then bishop would have to take on d7 but then rook on d7 rook a on c1 uh, exchanging the rooks and now black can take on e2 so uh win back um, the pawn as well and after rook on c8 just uh, bishop go on f8 and black as f are, are already fine uh maybe white would have a really really small advantage but nothing special probably very drawish uh for uh for both sides of course if it's drawish so rook a on c8 in this position it actually start to give some troubles a3 uh, was played by caruana it's a very great move it's actually a move where uh young Krzysztof duda spent like 40 minutes what to play now and it's very very difficult decision probably the best would be uh Pawn takes on a3 and after knight on um, a3, knight d7 and this knight actually don't have a good square so have to go on b1, uh, bishop on b5 and everything would be fine, not easy to break the position of black now uh, as this is extra defender, this bishop actually can't be attacked by the pawn so uh, pretty solid also for for some reason i'm not sure why uh but Jan krzysztof duda didn't see it attractive uh, also he had another option b3 which uh would be slightly worse after queen on c3 uh th there are uh, like plan of of getting um uh, this pawn and it's not easy to defend because the defender can be easily attacked so uh, probably black would just lose the the pawn of course that's a matter of calculations but that's the first look and rook on b8 was played so the rook goes on uh, c8 and now going back to b8 and actually this is where real trouble starts so a takes on b4 rook takes on b4 and now uh bishop on e3 was played very very nice human move of course um, uh, putting pressure on c5 and uh, and playing the game interesting would be mash machine uh, bishop on d2 uh, and here rook of course can't go deeper there for example on b8 because on b4 and kicking this knight and of course winning the the bishop so that would not be possible uh, maybe rook on b6 would be possible but after bishop on e3 pinning that knight then there are even more troubles for black so for example queen on e5 bishop on d4 now attacking the queen queen f5 exchanging and actually black didn't solve any problems rook on a5 is coming uh, development of uh, of the of the pieces is coming and uh, white would have very very strong gameplay here so uh, bishop d2 definitely good there is also one interesting line for example bishop on b3 if, if could be played so uh, more active not so passive like before but after rook takes on 
a6 uh, of course uh, rook can be taken because the uh, black would lo lose the, the the rook here and the piece so rook would have to take on f3 and after rook a5 attacking the um, the knight uh, rook f5 could be played bishop b4 knight b7 and after exchanging the bishops uh, queen e7 and rook a7 could be could be played and after exchanging even more uh, pawns uh, at the end of the day um, yeah this is attacked Th this knight would be attacked so it looks like very dangerous because uh, the knight is pinned but knight actually can go on a5 and it's defended so here just mm, exchanging all the stuff and after rook on c7 white has extra pawn so actually black has extra pawn but at the end of all of this um, crazy stuff trying to unpin all of the uh, pieces these are white who has the extra pawn so um, definitely uh, bishop on d2 would be interesting but bishop e3 uh, was played and now we have queen on b7 situation of black at start to be more and more uh, complicated uh, for now this knight is attacked twice so black need to have some counterplay and also keep in mind that this bishop uh, gonna fall as well if the defender so uh, queen on b7 to defend the bishop but also giving some counterplay uh, on b2 now we have knight on d2 and rook takes on b2 so Jan Krzysztof Duda wins another pawn but not for long time queen c3 was played so all of this uh, is very precisely calculated by Fabiano Caruana and I think I need more light okay here we go so uh, it's still this uh, it's still under attack so knight is still under attack and um, black has to do something about that so rook on b5 is played and here there are a lot of options really white can play whatever um, and there are a lot of attractive options uh, but Fabiano Caruana don't go for the strongest one but the, for the easiest uh, and the simplest one so rook a3 was played with the plan to double the rooks attack the uh, bishop and also attack the a7 pawn and here we have queen on b8 and uh, it's really difficult to find the plan for um, for black um, queen b8 is definitely giving the the pawn for free but uh, giving the space for the for the bishop uh, and here rook on d on a1 so caruana thinks okay this uh six, six pawn is uh, weak anyway so no problem bishop on b7 and here we have rook on a7 knight d7 by duda knight c4 by caruana with the plan of going to d6 uh, really nice outpost for the knight and here we have rook on d8 bishop e4 by caruana and here we have c5 so very very late but c5 is played by by duda but and and of course um duda offers to exchange the light square bishop but uh pieces of white are very very strong so uh, caruana is not interested queen c2 uh, that's what he plays h6 by black and now we have bishop on d2 uh, remaneuvering the the bishop to the improving the position and now we have knight on f8 and if bishop takes on e4 it's not really great the queen would get the very central position and control a8 square as well so that would be always uh, black would have to always look for this tactic and pinning the the queen would be deadly so uh, bishop on f8 would have to be played and black would be even in more passive position so that was not the option at this moment knight f8 was played 
and here we have bishop on d3 so preparing this um jump to the d6 with a very nice uh, fork but also with the attack on the rook so rook on d7 first and after um, knight on d6 rook on b6 that was played by duda and here we have queen on c5 so uh, actually fabiano caruana won all the pawns on the queen side and now he is up the pawn so after all of these complications and very active uh, gameplay he is up the pawn and still uh, black didn't get anything for that the black just lost two pawns and they are still in uh, big troubles so bishop on d5 was played rook takes on d7 and knight takes on d7 attacking the queen queen c8 so exchanging the queens but uh, actually queen can't be taken because after knight on takes on c8 that would be fork on the bishop on and the uh, and the rook and that would be you know winning the exchange and of course winning for white quite easily so uh, knight on f8 had to be played and now exchanging on b8 uh, and here we have f4 so consolidating the position uh, for for white and making this beautiful pawn chain and here we have bishop on d8 bishop on d8 probably to avoid the, the attack on the seven rank and uh, uh, king f2 was played by white if the knight go to uh, h7 not really great to improving the position same story with uh, g6 so uh, do that try to activate the piece uh, going back to d7 and here we have bishop on e3 uh, we have g5 and bishop on d4 so remaneuvering the the bishop uh, to another position and now we have rook on b4 attacking this bishop and king on e3 centralizing the king so king now um, is very strong uh, in the center while black king still um, stay in the corner and here we have g takes on f4 g takes on f4 and actually it opens the line and it's not really in favor on of, on black only white can actually use that uh, king f8 and bishop on b5 so this position is uh, very active a uh, very strong for white but it still needs some technique to win that position so definitely the best would be exchanging some pieces uh, simplify the position and win with this extra pawn um, because it still can play uh, for example e4 f5 and that would be the plan with extra pawn should be an uh, easy win but with so many pieces not really uh, actually we have quite interesting situation here uh, we have all the light pieces uh, so uh, it looks pretty fancy just two more uh, knights and that would be a really really beautiful view but uh, bishop on b5 was played so attacking this knight uh, and here actually if you calculate black actually doesn't have any good move bishop b6 uh maybe bishop b6 but it's still losing after bishop on b6 knight b6 and rook a7 uh it's unstoppable this uh taking on f7 is unstoppable so uh that would be really difficult for 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 black so knight f6 is the like last last try by duda e takes on f6 as planned and now rook takes on d4 rook takes on d4 so of course if king takes uh, on d4 then bishop takes on f6 uh, and then attacking with the uh, uh, x-ray the king would have to move and white would rook, lose the rook so that's not an option uh, so white has to find some move which is very strong they actually could go for a7 
that's one option but there is one much more stronger move and it's not the rook on a8 of course because the the bishop controls that uh, square but rook on c1 with the threat to going on c8 it is something uh, something really strong and uh, bishop on f6 was played here uh, and here we have rook on c7 so not rook on c8 now there is opportunity to get as uh, f7 pawn and situation of black is uh, really really difficult uh, if black try to create more threats for example bishop on b3 attacking this knight uh, yes that would be okay for for attack on f7 and if uh, white decide to take the bishop black would take the the knight so that would be the the option the problem is rook c8 can come with check and after king on e7 the knight actually can go on e4 attacking the bishop and after picking up the bishop the rook would have no protection so uh, if the rook moves anywhere uh, wh wherever for example on d5 or on b4 then there is checkmate here so that's actually not possible so rook would have to move to actually d8 uh, and after the rook on c7 uh, of course rook can can go b back to d7 because gonna be taken for free king f8 and now bishop is lost and with one minor pin piece extra of course it's um easy win for white so uh there, there is nothing black actually can do so do that try bishop on h8 as uh the, the all calculation are, are just gone wrong so bishop h8 but we have still rook on c8 king e7 attacking the knight uh, but still after losing the knight the, the rook is gonna be taken so um, it's it's impossible to do everything so rook takes on h8 so rook take on go on b4 attacking the the bishop and king also attacks the the knight but here knight on c8 with check and that's actually ends the game king f6 bishop d3 and white are just up the piece so this way or another there is no option to do anything for black uh so all of this um uh, ending is uh, it, it was already lost but Caruana found the tactical way to just win the piece and of course the game and here we have bishop on e4 I'm not sure uh, this move was played in the game but in every PGN file um, it's available so maybe uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda just moved the bishop and resigned the game maybe he didn't I'm not sure about that but that's what we have in the file so with one extra uh, piece of course the white wins here and uh, one pawn for Caruana and uh, and Magnus Carlsen drew today so Caruana has one and a half points more than uh, Magnus Carlsen so before last round he is already winner of this tournament he can even lose in the last game and uh, of course he will fight for his rating and um, for more points so don't worry about that but he already uh, is uh, the winner so congratulations for Fabiano Caruana for winning the uh, Vegan Z tournament for the first time in his life okay that's being said uh, thanks you for watching if you like this video press like if you don't like this video press unlike and leave the comment for me that's the best indicator you just watch this and um, enjoy or not and and i'm al always happy to to read some new comments so thanks for watching and see you in the next one